This has 3.4 million views. It's from one month ago. I don't know what's going on here, but like, I'm a, I'm already worried. While now, that we're being told not to notice. More to the point, that we're asking white people not only to ignore, but to accept the rising tide of racial hatred against white people. Shut the fuck up. Is this a joke? Is this a joke? Please tell me this is a joke. Charlie Chion, I talk about the rising tide of racial hatred against white people that some people are refusing to acknowledge is happening. Yeah. Extremely my shit. Extremely my shit. Tell me how I, the white man, am oppressed. Ooh. Ooh, I love this shit, dude. Ooh. Ooh-wee. Oh, I love this. This is, oh, dude, this is so Reddit. I'm going to get banned while watching this. Okay. In the past decade, there has been a noticeable cultural shift in what constitutes acceptable speech as it relates to white people. Back when <laughs> Wait, in the past few decades, he's like, bro, it was not acceptable to shit on white people during the, the civil rights era. You know what I mean? It was not, <laughs> which is really, you know, we got to get back to that. That's what we got to get back to. You know what I mean? <laughs> How many decades? What's he talking about? How old is this guy? When I was a kid in the early 2000s, the mainstream American culture. Oh, in the past decade. He was talking about one decade. Okay. My bad. My bad. 20 year old, notably the generation that knows this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he knows. He is literally 2016 again. We are living the cycles of history within decades. I love that. They're preached about respecting each other's differences and not seeing color. Nowadays, we say that not seeing color is racism, that you must see color. But the more I see how things are unfolding, the more- Yes, being colorblind has always, in a society that is fundamentally white supremacist, the notion that you are colorblind is racist, okay? You're just acting like you're like, oh, I see no color. Like, there's a laughable concept. We already know that there's no fucking shot. Uh, come on. Come on now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <sighs> Neutrality in the face of injustice is siding with the oppressor. Say it with me, okay? Inaction in the face of inequality is siding with the oppressor. The notion that you are colorblind in a society that is racist and still has systemic racism is just basically saying there is racism but i don't see it because i see no color that's it Whew. okay more i'm convinced that this is wrong back then saying something offhanded back when motherfucker when you were a fetus what does he mean back then the fuck do you know how old is this guy please Someone tell me how old this guy is. I need to figure this out. Okay. <laughs> yeah, back then. Back then, when I was 10 years old, okay, it was a big no-no to say mini bobini things about white people. People were seen as not appropriate, just as it would be to say something offhanded about people of any other race. But that soon gave way to our current times, in which there exists virtually no limit to what racial minorities can and do say about white people. I believe... <laughs> This is the natural outgrowth of a perverse ideology that teaches us that everything, every societal ill, is the fault of white people and that whatever prejudice acts we may inflict upon them does not constitute discrimination because we don't have the power to discriminate. And alarmingly, this is particularly pronounced in the younger generation. Alarmingly. It's so alarming. A generation that definitely... Yo, this, this dude is... A, is oof. Okay. Okay. He's trying to get that clandest grift. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's giving, it's giving. We need to, do, uh, we need to abolish affirmative action energy. What is it like the Asians against a, a affirmative action uh, lobbying group, which is like run by white dudes, but then they go and find a couple like right wing Asian guys to be like, look, see, it's the Asians that want to uh, abolish affirmative action. Fucking owned, fucking owned liberals. But is it true? Do we not have the power to discriminate? Well, let's see. First, Ooh. let's take a look. Ooh, I love this. He's going to give us a logic game. Okay. Look at the racial hatred at the interpersonal level. In today's society, it has become somewhat fashionable to think things and say things about and to white people that would not be acceptable if it was said about any other race. 
fucking owned. True. Whiteness is about having power. It's the in-group that has power. When Irish people were discriminated against, they were discriminated against because they were not considered to be white. When Italians were discriminated against, they were discriminated against because they were not considered white. Both of these groups have now firmly become a part of white people. So much so that Hispanics, who also have, you know, uh, uh, white lineage, white ancestry, Latinos, white Hispanics, are now also considered white in the United States of America because whiteness is an ever-expanding concept, okay? The only group of people that will never be white are obviously black people. That's it. It's about, it's about proximity to power, and in a white supremacist system, it is about how far away you are from being a black person, from blackness, okay? That's how it works. Uh, same with Jewish people, same with Polish people. Fucking go far enough, go back enough in time, and you will find that Benjamin Franklin, old Benny boy himself, considered German people, and even the Swedes, and certainly Italians and Greeks and all them, to be, cons he considered them to be swarthy, okay? In the eyes of Benjamin Franklin, America was a nation built by Anglo-Saxons and some French people that he wanted to fuck. That's true. He, he considered French to at least be considered white or white adjacent enough because he wanted to have sexual intercourse with them. Remind yourself of this reality. Anyway, so yeah, he, he said these motherfuckers were swarthy. He said the Swedes and the Germans and the Italians were all swarthy and not white. This concept is, is completely socially defined. And that social definition comes from power and who has power. So, of course, be making jokes, and I say this as a white person, okay? Making jokes about whiteness and white people do not hit the same as any other subgroup or subcategory because those other groups, especially in a white nation, okay, you're making this shit up. Oh, okay, you're making this shit up. That's crazy. Am I? Let's take a look. Man, I love, this is the part of the broadcast where I have to fucking, uh, you know, <sighs> written by friend of the show, Matty Iglesias. Why should the, this is what Benjamin Franklin's thoughts are on the horrors of the U.S. being overrun by German immigrants. Why should the Palatine bulls be suffered to swarm into our settlements and by herding together establish their language and manners of, to the exclusion of ours? Why should Pennsylvania, founded by the English, become a colony of aliens who will shortly be so numerous as to Germanize us instead of our anglifying them and will never adopt our language or customs any more than they can acquire our complexion. Bro, he's talking about Germans. Talking about Germans, dude. Complexion. Which leads me to add one remark, that the number of purely white people in the world is proportionably very small. All Africa is black or tawny. Asia, chiefly tawny. America, exclusive of the newcomers, wholly so. And in Europe, the Spaniards, Italians, French, Russians, and Swedes are generally of what we call swarthy complexion, as are the Germans also. The Saxons only expected... Who with the English make the principal body of white people on the face of the earth? I could wish their numbers were increased. And while we are, I may call it, scouring our planet by clearing America of woods, you know, cutting the tall trees, and so is making this side of our globe reflect a brighter light to the eyes of inhabitants in Mars or Venus. Why should we, in the sight of superior beings... Darken its people. He's saying like aliens from Mars are looking down at us and they're like, yo, you guys are white as fuck. I love that shit. Why should we darken that? It'll be embarrassing to like, not the aliens that are German, but like the aliens up in space. Why increase the sons of Africa by planting them in America where we have so fair an opportunity by excluding all blacks and tawnies of increasing the lovely white and red? but perhaps I am partial to the complexion of my country for such kind partiality is natural to mankind. Yeah, he was smoking on that fucking 
I don't know. He was smoking on that lechuga when he wrote this shit. He was he was on crack, okay? He also I my favorite part is like this is just tribalism and it's natural to mankind. So understand that like the concept of whiteness, okay, by the way, from a bunch of slavers, hmm, surprising that like uh, a <laughs> bunch of homies who who wanted to, you know, do slavery and stuff and had slaves were were kind of racist. That's crazy. To Germans, dog. To Germans. Now, understand something, someone in the chat said, but he made graduation. Understand something. Okay. White and red, I think he means like uh Native Americans. At least he's not like full blown, like let's fucking kill every indigenous person at this point, at this at this venture when he's describing America. He's like, yeah, they were here. So that is not the current definition. Isn't that an old definition? No one except history PhDs thinks that's the current definition of whiteness. No one thinks that's the current definition of whiteness. That is literally the entire point of this concept. My point is whiteness is social. It's just socially developed. That's the point. It changed throughout time. There was a time not that long ago when, like I said, Polish people were not considered white, Greek people were not considered white, Italian people were not considered white, Hispanics were certainly not considered white, but all of these groups, Jewish people were not considered white, all of these groups of people were not considered white in the eyes of those who were white, okay? And now that concept is expanded. It can also shrink, right? It can also shrink in times of fascism, right? You understand? Which is precisely why when people make jokes about white people, they're making jokes about, it's the same as like making jokes about billionaires. It doesn't mean that every white person has power, okay? It does not mean that at all. But you need to understand, okay? You need to understand that when people make jokes about white people, it's the same as people making jokes about straight people. That's why it doesn't hit the same. You are making a joke about a group of individuals that have the power. Okay? Reverse racism represents the denial of the historical and contemporary, contemporary reality of racial discrimination and denies the existence of white privilege. Where does it manifest from? It's trauma and history. Exactly. Poor whites do exist. Yes, they do. But they are not discriminated against on the virtue of being white. They are discriminated against on the virtue of being poor, which is why I, as a leftist, constantly talk about class politics. Okay, nobody shits on you for being white. You are not like being denied a job. You are not being prosecuted by the police more often than other groups because you're white. You're being prosecuted by the police or persecuted by the police because you're poor, because you live in the bad neighborhood. Okay, that's the difference. This is not something you even have to think about. And in most instances, Something that you will never be able to comprehend unless you have a diverse group of friends who you respect and value who will tell you what it's like. Not to do too much like standpoint theory, bodies and spaces type shit, but it, but it ultimately is true. It's hard to develop empathy, okay? It's hard to develop empathy uh, if you are relatively privileged in this regard. That's why there is such a thing as black culture that you can associate with and it's more tangible. Whereas there is no such thing as white culture other than like people making jokes. Now, let me explain to you what I mean by that. Black culture is born out of the intergenerational struggle of chattel slavery. Because black people in this country had to make up their own culture. Okay? Because they were ripped away from their homes robbed of their identity, robbed of their language, robbed of their lineage, robbed of their culture and were forced into slavery. I'm talking rape, death, execution, servitude. And through that process, they were forced, because they can't be cultureless, okay? They were forced to develop an identity, a united identity. That's why there is such a thing as black culture, but there's no such thing as white culture other than like putting raisins in uh, a potato salad or whatever the fuck people joke about. That's why every most white people can trace back their ancestry 
which is not a luxury afforded to African descended slaves in this country. They can't. Okay? That difference is, no matter which way you cut it, a very significant difference. Okay? That's why the jokes don't hit the same. That's why one can be considered jokes. So when you turn around and say, oh man, anti-white discrimination is at an all-time high, you're just being fucking annoying. Because there's another part of this process. Everyone likes to make jokes. Everyone wants humor in their lives. And we got to make fun of somebody. So why the fuck are you crying about making fun of a group of individuals, which by the way, most of the time it's white people making fun of white people, okay? That is the other part of this process too. Like, why are you crying about like the one group of people that is appropriate to make fun of, acceptable to make fun of? It's about punching up. And we're being taught that this double standard is not wrong that it is rather a form of empowerment. They'll attribute negative experiences that they've had with white people to their whiteness. You had an argument in light at the grocery store with a white person? White people do have culture. When you say something like that, white people don't have culture, you assert the white supremacist idea that white is the default. White is the default. Because the default is whoever is in power. And this country was fundamentally built by white supremacists with white supremacist ideas. The society was designed around uplifting, upholding a structure of white supremacy which is precisely the reason why white people don't have a culture. There is no collective white culture other than fucking jokes and like pointing to not being able to dance, lol, or raisins and potato salad, old Navy sales, kissing your dog on the lips. Okay? Do you understand? It's a ridiculous thing to say. White people don't have culture. Italians have culture. Greeks have culture. English people have Okay, maybe not English people. German people have some kind of culture. Everybody has culture, but it's not on the basis of whiteness. It's on the basis of being not English and everyone else instead. <laughs> yeah, there's Irish culture, Greek culture, but it's not white culture. Let's continue. They were acting entitled because they were white. A white driver cut you off when you were driving. They need to check their white privilege. That's not how this goes. Now we're moving on the straw man. Okay, let's go. Oh, I got blindsided by a white guy. That's white privilege. Shut the fuck up, bro. Shut up, shut up. Your actions, your conduct, and your existence, in other words, boil down to your whiteness. And ashamedly, at one point in time, this was how I used to think as well. And beyond the people in my circle. Oh, he's, oh, he's a reformed, uh, you know, he's a reformed, I, let me guess, left-wing extremist, like someone was saying in the chat. He's a reformed left-wing extremist who probably personally completely misunderstood what progressivism was about and realized, like, uh, you know, that this is a better grift to, to jump onto. I noticed that many people of color have this sort of blase attitude, an attitude most particularly pronounced when there are no other white people around. Things are being said not just behind closed doors, but out in the open. Not just between close friends, but between complete strangers. So here's the thing. This is something that I've experienced countless times, so I know that- Okay, first of all, motherfucker, sorry to say this. I'm white, okay, at least white enough, right? You're Asian. I'm gonna keep it a buck fifty with you. You have no fucking clue how racist white people get when they don't think there's anyone that's non-white around, okay? So shut the fuck up. Straight up. I'll say it exactly like it is you have no fucking idea okay you you were just oh my god he said oh non-white people get real racist when white people aren't around no okay as someone who's been around uh non-white spaces predominantly non-white spaces someone who's been in uh, very white spaces i can tell you with a certainty one group of people don't say a lot of shit in public that they definitely feel comfortable saying behind closed doors or under the guise of anonymity, like in an Xbox lobby or something, like a COD lobby. Okay? Let me say that. That's number one. Number two, non-white people say shit all the time around white people, and it's especially the same shit that they say that when they're not around white people. Okay? Straight up. Because non-white people do not consider anti-white sentiment to be completely unacceptable, inappropriate. Uh, an abhorrent, uh, you know, form of bigotry 
for the reasons that I just explained. Okay? That's it. That's the reality of the matter. But there are other people who are experiencing it too. I know it must resonate with at least some of you. The difficulty here is that no matter how many anecdotes I share, they are just that, anecdotes. And people who refuse to believe that this is happening will just chalk it up to my experience as being a fluke. Or worse yet, they'll say I'm lying. So I've compiled some TikTok videos. I want oh, dude, I love this. My man was like, guys, this is going to be a fucking evidence-free video, okay? I ain't got no evidence for what I'm talking about. Plenty of people have written about this matter. Um, plenty of people, like an insane amount of people uh, from, from sociologists, anthropologists, like literally every facet of the fucking social scientist has had something to say about this very specific content, this very specific thing that he's talking about. But of course, those are books, and books are fucking gay, which is why, instead, I am going to show you anecdotes from fucking TikTok of some unhinged fucking Zoomers saying some idiotic bullshit and then make it seem like that's what everyone is doing and this is what everyone's fucking perspective is. Oh, shut the fuck up, bitch. Oh, my God, this is triggering the fuck out of me. We are two minutes and 30 Five seconds into this video, I'm losing my fucking mind. Whoo! Okay. Odds he has a clip of you in the video. I'm going to say 60-40 odds. No, probably not. Now, there is one element that I have to contend with here, okay? Having said all that I said about white people, whiteness as a concept, about proximity to power, being in the in-group, all of that stuff... Are there still marginalized people, non-white people that say dumb shit sometimes? Of course there are, okay? Do some people sometimes take it too far? Of course, we're all human. And being a fucking dumbass is a fundamental part of being a human. Does this mean that like everyone that's non-white is like this? Of course not. But of course, every single time, motherfuckers who want to make reactionary content are going to use those extreme examples to say, this is the norm. This is the norm. Because the goal here is to just cut propaganda. I want you to take a look at the things that are being said about white people, especially by the younger generation, the kind of statements people wouldn't dare say about people of any other race. Take a look at what is stunningly in vogue in today's society and ask yourselves, where does this lead to years down the line? You have a token white and you're hanging out with your friend group of color you need to ask permission from everybody in the group to bring your white friend. Like, don't just. Ugh. Okay. Okay. I. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, fucking Zoomers, man. What the fuck? What the fuck? Okay. Listen, dude. They're on TikTok. These are people on TikTok. Please. Please. Every single TikTok that motherfuckers point to with respect to like politics and political concepts and political ideas can be solved with one color, green, the color of grass, touching it, but also the color green, like the $5 green that you will spend at the top of the hour to avoid the three minute ad break. I fucking hate using TikToks to as a substitute for how real human beings are when everyone on TikTok is mentally ill, okay? Everyone on Twitter is mentally ill. Why do I know this? Because I'm mentally ill and I'm on both of these fucking platforms. Shut the fuck up. In the real world where people are actually, you know, developing interpersonal relationships, communicating with one another, if someone behaves this way, you go, Dog, that's crazy. You're a crazy person. Stop being crazy and you move on. Okay? 400K views, though, I think people severely misunderstand how many psychotic people exist on the fucking planet. Okay? This person got Omega Rosa for this take, by the way. Of course they did. Of course. Half of the, not even half. The majority, the overwhelming majority of fucking views that are on this video are probably to dunk on them. Okay, that's it. Bro, if you're as mentally as these people, why would we listen to you? Because I'm the fucking whisperer, dude. Okay, I'm the normal whisperer for you. I'm teaching you how to be fucking normal. Just bring them. With them. I, I might not be in the mood to deal with white shenanigans that day. That's, that's all I'm saying. And another thing, it feeds into their ego. 
Like, don't don't let them think they're a good white person. Accomplices ask. Oh my fucking god! Oh my, oh my god! Uh, okay, yeah, this shit is like this. Shit, this is rage bait. This is rage bait. This is rage bait. This is a. This is not even a psyop. Okay, this is just fucking rage bait. Non-white people have the capacity to be fucking just as mentally ill as white people, just as mentally ill as everyone else. And one fundamental thing that I absolutely fucking despise that leftists do, which we've talked about a lot on this broadcast. If you've been watching me for a long time, you fucking know this. She's a black hammer member? Shut the fuck up. Are you serious? Bro, she's in a fucking cult. Stop. It's like pointing to a fucking, oh my God, that video is literally like pointing to some fucking Utah LDS psycho with like 11 wives, all of them are his daughters, and going, this is how every white person is. This is how every conservative white person is like, we got to stop this shit, okay? No, but you don't do that because white is the default, so you have an understanding that like whiteness is not a monolithic concept. Black Hammer is a fucking psychotic uh, uh, group of people that, like, murdered, raped people. They, uh, the, the fucking leader is in jail right now. Did you watch the, didn't you watch the don't, video about the next guy? Don't think they're a good white well, person. And, oh, here. How can they support black and indigenous people of color? And sometimes I really don't know what to say, but here's one easy way. Just don't have babies. The person in the clip is a literal troll that this guy took seriously. Brandly this one? Caused the white genocide that they are so afraid of. With 2.25 billion Asian women and half a billion white men, baby, it'll only take two generations. In two generations, there will no longer be any blonde haired. These are some things I noticed. Wait, that's a great, wait, 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 wait. So I don't know if this is satire or not, but like, hold up. This is a great example. This was, there's a Prager U logo in this, by the way. Kind of sus that this guy found a Prager U video to use uh, in, in uh, what he was talking about. But hold on. Let me explain something. What? That's a Nazi? No, that's not a Nazi. She's making a joke about how there are more Asian women than there are white women, right? And then she says, white genocide. We can make it happen if we wanted to by what? Fucking white people. That's what she's saying. That's not how genocide works, you fucking idiots. There is no such thing. There is no genocide. It's not like the Nazis were like, yo, let's do the Holocaust by having consensual sexual intercourse with Jewish people, okay? That's a fucking genocide. That's real genocide. White people or whoever people, whoever fucking considers themselves to be fucking white literally are so privileged that they think it's genocide when you literally have sex with people of different fucking races and motherfuckers still don't understand how this is a laughable concept. There you go. You already broke the fucking code, dumbass, by putting this video in there. This is very clearly a satirical video. When people say great replacement is happening and white genocide is happening, it's laughable. It's a silly notion. That's why I make fun of it all the fucking time because it's not a real concept. It has never happened in the history of mankind and it won't fucking happen. It will, or if it did happen somehow in like this, uh, you know, Wakanda took over because Killmonger was actually right all along and like literally did the things that he was supposed to be doing instead of fucking, I don't know, uh, dying or, uh, or, or building a, a, a fucking, what was it like a, like a community support, uh, uh, community support building in, in, uh, in, in Inglewood. Instead of doing that, if there was like an actual fucking white genocide that happened, it certainly wouldn't be on the terms of like having consensual intercourse with white people in order to breed out uh, white people out of existence, okay? Australia did it with their native people. Yeah, except Australia didn't do it under normal consensual conditions. When white people have done it to indigenous populations, they have literally done it forcibly. That's the difference. Do you understand? Stealing native children, indigenous children from their families and, uh, and, and, and re-educating them and then forcibly breeding them is not the same as what white genocide is. That was rape, okay? 
the coercion and the theft of children is what is unethical in that situation and the non-consensual sex that is unethical in that situation. Do you understand the difference? The, the entire white identitarian movement can be reduced to the same fundamental principle of being the most annoying motherfucker in any room, okay? It's no different, except there is one main difference. The one major difference is that in many instances, at least the rad libs, albeit are really fucking annoying, take it too far, who gives a shit, are usually correct with their historical interpretation of oppression, okay? At least they figured that part out. They're still fucking annoying when they're like, oh my God, I can't believe like, like there was a moment yesterday when Jeff, I'm going to fucking, you know, I'm going to leak, uh, when Jeff was cutting my hair, I'm going to leak a part of this. Uh, the video is not out yet, but when he was cutting my hair, okay, he apparently, he had a bit where he was going to do a, he was going to act like he was a Chinese spy and he learned Mandarin. He learned Mandarin phrases specifically to say, and he actually did a really good job. And it was shocking. And he's like, you think people will think that's racist? I'm like, motherfucker, you learned Mandarin. Like, that's insane. Speaking a different language is not racist. Like, you learned to say words in a different language. Why the fuck would that be racist? And some people will probably consider that to be xenophobic or racist in general. But it's like, who cares? Who cares? That's just speaking a different language. Like, that's this attitude that permeates in certain rattled circles where it's like, like, you know, trying to speak a different language or trying to learn a new language. I don't know. Seems kind of fucked up, sweaty. It's a appropriation of language. It's like, yeah, shut up. You're a fucking idiot. No one cares. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> Guess Jacob Big is the most racist man in the world by the sentiment. Exactly. Exactly. There are hypersensitive people in every community this motherfucker is literally being hypersensitive for white people right now. That's the point. It's just like the internet has robbed people's brain cells, dude. What remaining shred of fucking brain cells the motherfuckers had, it's gone. It's so stupid. Race neutral laws discriminate against people of color. And this is certainly evidence that in one side of the political aisle, <laughs> people of color have more power than white people. Because if we didn't have the power, we wouldn't be able to put into place practices and policies that does this. That's what power is. Things like- mini Yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, getting affirmative action as a band-aid, as a band-aid for like historically redlining black communities and, and utilizing the police force like an occupying force and making sure that black communities are permanently underserved so they can go directly from school to prison in the school to prison pipeline is actually is is actually completely solved by doing affirmative action that's crazy like that's that's it, that shows real power dude real power is when like one black kid gets to get into harvard that's how this works straight up no, we live in a fucking country that has whitewashed its genocidal, colonial, exploitative history. And that's what black children learn in their fucking schools too, by the way. So much so that that anti-blackness is internalized even within black people. And this motherfucker's talking about remediation because like some fucking random dumbass Zoomer on TikTok was like, uh, white people eat mayonnaise a certain way. And it's like, what the fuck? This is the worst thing that could have ever happened. Look at the power they have. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Fury as Minneapolis Teachers Union negotiates clause requiring white educators to be laid off first regardless of seniority to make up a rule for past discriminations. 0% chance that this is fucking real, okay? 0% chance that this is a, a genuine uh, a, a genuine thing. It's probably bastardized, okay? Yeah, this local government agreeing to a contract with the And even then, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't fucking mean anything. It's, this is not power, okay? A new Minneapolis teacher's contract is a center of debate over diversity. A Minneapolis school district, which, by the way, most likely, you know, high percentage of black students, okay? A provision in the new teacher's contract in Minneapolis is now at the center of debate over diversity and seniority. The new contract is a clause designed to protect teachers of color from seniority-based layoffs. Teachers overwhelmingly approved the contract last spring, but conservative groups have filed a lawsuit saying the measure discriminates against white teachers. What?
Why are we not talking about how Trump went to Ohio and Biden went to Ukraine? What's the motive? I did talk about that already. The new contract says that they may go outside the order to avoid layoffs to a teacher who is a member of a population that is underrepresented. There you go. Yes. It's a black district, and they want to make sure that, like, uh, a, a, a population of black teachers is still there. So that's it. It's always, it's always treated like a zero-sum game. They make it seem like, huh, they always make it seem like trying to ensure that black children, okay, um, trying, to, trying to ensure that black children have black teachers, okay, uh, in, an effort to, in an effort to, you know, foster their educational opportunities is like anti-white in some way. It's so stupid. The comments on this video are hilarious. All just, as a white man, thank you for saying this is beca this because every time I say making fun of my mayo habits is worse than slavery, I get called racist. <laughs> yeah. Average.uk article. How the fuck are you defending this, Lamau? A new contract between Minneapolis public school teachers and teachers unions that cause outrages because see senior white teachers intentionally laid out before teachers of color. The contract says instead of teacher layoffs or relocations being decided based on seniority, as is typical, schools can ignore that protocol and dismiss senior staff members. It otherwise, a teacher of color would be laid off. How about no teachers being laid off? Okay. Like, this is literally another instance of utilizing racial segregation specifically as an effort to fucking mediate through an actual contract, uh, uh, an actual collective bargaining agreement. I fucking hate this. And then the right wing take this and go hook, line, and sinker. They just fucking eat the bait. They're like, this. oh, great. It's so stupid. Many have called the deal unconstitutional because accused, uh, accused it of addressing past racism with more racism. First of all, racial wounds that were created on the basis of racial discrimination of course, are going to have remediation, actual remediation, that will still be racialized as well. Okay? Let's say there are three kids in a playground, and the bully in the playground beat the shit out of one kid and didn't beat the shit out of the other two kids. When someone steps in and says, hey, what the fuck are you doing? Stop doing that. We're going to heal the one kid that you beat the shit out of. The other two kids go, wait a minute. Why not me? I want to get health care too right now, even though I don't need anything. Please give me a Band-Aid too. That's what this sounds like every single fucking time. It's like, bro, that's the kid that got beat the shit out of. What the fuck are you talking about? If you get beat the shit out of, I'll help you. The fuck are you crying about? It sounds like it was a policy to address the already racist policies in place and white people cried about it. Yeah. The prioritizing of teachers of color over senior educators may also apply to rehiring after layoff. The district shall excess the next least senior teacher who is not a member of an underrepresented population. Yes. It's because they want to maintain. It's because they want to also the person who did this is white. Like the person who fucking pushed for this is white, which is, you know, another uh, another uh, funny part of it, but the stipulation is part of a new agreement starting in spring 2023 between Minneapolis Federation of Teachers and Minneapolis Public Schools ending a two-week-long sh teacher strike. I'm willing to buy that they were making sure that no one got fucking fired. There's probably another reason why this is being pushed because at least this way they won't fire some of the fucking, uh, uh, some of the white teachers anyway. It's just a way to, it's, it's a way to use a racial passive, a racial shield to make sure that no teacher gets fired. Okay. The worst part about this is that none of these, none of these actually solve the, the genuine issue of racial inequality in this country. These are all band-aid solutions. If you want to do genuine racial restitution, you got to start with reparations, but nobody wants to have that fucking conversation. That is unimaginable because we live in a country where motherfuckers who don't, motherfuckers don't even want to act like slavery was that big of a problem. And it can't certainly still have any tangible impacts on contemporary existence. You know what I mean? So how the fuck 
How do we how do we do that? How do we have a conversation about reparations in this country? How do we actually solve racial wounds that were opened up in in this nation's inception and and played a fundamental role in societal development? You can't do that. Yeah. Well, reparations were given. You are correct, Gyro. Reparations were given in this country to people who were slavers. The federal government paid white slave owners money for the slaves that they had freed after, you know, a bit of a, a heated gaming moment uh, called the Civil War. Um, you know, so there, there is that. Teachers Union that says white teachers must be fired first. New York City's government enacting a policy of having white seniors go to the back of the line on life-saving COVID treatment. A college professor that says white people should be killed and facing no repercussions. Cornell University banning white people. Rutgers University failed to condemn tenure professor who said we got to take out these motherfuckers. We got to take these motherfuckers out about white people. What? Rutgers, I'm disgusted. What is this? Brittany Cooper, professor of women's gender studies and Africana studies. What the fuck is this? What happened here? Cornell's BIPOC only rock climbing course. Bro, American colleges literally do not fire rapist professors. Okay. Who do you, what is the dominant uh, group of, of tenured professors in this, in this country? You, you want to take a gander at that? You want to think about that? You want to think about that for a second? White men, okay? You know what they, I mean, they, rate, they routinely uh, sexually assault students, TAs, all the like. They don't get fucking fired. What the fuck are you talking about? This is more so a concept about tenure. I'm not saying, what about the white uh, professors? I'm saying tenure uh, in college campuses are not going to be, uh, uh, are, are not going to be unshakable, okay? There's literally pro-white supremacist professors in institutions of higher learning right now that are tenured. But you don't hear Daily Mail articles about that, so no one gives a fuck. You know what I mean? I mean, dude, dude, dude. Jordan Peterson literally said, Jordan Peterson, isn't he still a college professor? He straight up fucking said, a consenting adult, trans man, Elliot Page, and the consenting medical professional that, uh, that, that gave him top surgery, okay, were actually doing butchery akin to Joseph Mengele. No, he quit. He self-canceled. Never mind. Okay, my bad. He, I guess he's out now. The fuck are you talking about? Professors say wild shit all the goddamn time. Cornell was gets fired from Harvard. No, you know what professors do actually get fucking fired from college campuses that none of these dipshits ever fucking talk about? Professors that advocate for Palestinians. Okay? Professors that get advocate from Palestinians literally get blackballed. Okay, you are literally defending Auschwitz. Wait, what? Huh? How did you make that assertion? Oh, you're talking about Jordan Peterson. The video is 19 minutes is on. It's almost done. Yeah, Mark Lamont Hill got fired for that. I didn't hear people chirping about that. Shut the fuck up. What is this? America's not racist. Changed my mind. Day 21 of Black History Month at my HBCU. Nice, dude. Love that. Agitators all around. It's great. Yeah, in Texas, you can get fired for being critical of Israel if you're a public servant like a teacher. If, you're, if you are hired by the... the uh, if you are a teacher at a public institution in Texas, you can get fired for being openly supportive of Palestine, okay? Palestinian people. How fucking insane is that? Yeah, Norm Finkelstein was, was literally blackballed from teaching in any institute of higher learning. A fucking, a, a child of Holocaust victims, okay, was fired and subsequently blackballed from every institute of higher learning for advocating for Palestinians and calling Israel an apartheid state. 
Mark Lamont Hill still works at Temple University. He was fired from CNN. Oh, I thought he was. I thought they fired him from uh, his school too. Rutgers University fails to condemn per tenured professors who say we got to take these motherfuckers out about white people. Brittany Cooper, a tenured university, tenured professor at New Jersey Rutgers University, is facing backlash. Many have deemed the black educators' comments, which can be traced back nearly a decade, to be racist. Bro, a decade ago. Oh my god, that's so funny. Okay. Well, the Amy Wax uh, person still is, like, more unhinged now, okay? And she's fine, so. ay yeah, yeah. Told the Rube Michael Harry in an online segment of the publication last month that white people are villains and even celebrated a statistic de depicting a decline in white birth rates. What the fuck? That just, like, automatically... Get me to fucking send an email? What the fuck was that? That's a thing? Bro, this is just straight up for old people, bro. Like, literally. You can immediately share your selection to Facebook, Twitter, or send an email to a friend. That's so funny. Um, in her most recent tirade, uh, she said, celebrated a statistic dep depicting a decline in white birth rates. Exactly. Depicting a decline in white birth rates. Hmm. Huh. Hold on. Hold on. A decline in white birth rates. Does that mean white people are being, uh, I don't know, uh, murdered or, or is that because miscegenation is no longer illegal in this country? Let me think. Oh, it's the second thing. That's right. It's because miscegenation is no longer illegal. So unless you're fucking advocating for miscegenation to be legal again, sorry, that's just kind of how it works. So fucking stupid, dude. What's more, when primed by Herod is the what her solution for addressing white supremacy would be, the educator vehemently replied that she would take them out. Oh, oh, so it wasn't actually about white people. Oh, it was about white supremacists. Oh, wow. Wait a minute. But I thought it was just like we should take out white motherfuckers or whatever is what this black professor was saying. Oh, no. She was talking about white supremacists. That's crazy. Huh. Huh. What a misleading headline. Cornell's BIPOC-only rock climbing course open to white students after racism claims. People from rock climbing lessons. One of... Yeah, banning... Banning... No, there is not a... Whenever people do this kind of thing, it triggers me to no fucking end, okay? When college campuses do stuff like this, that doesn't mean there isn't a normal rock climbing club, Okay. There's a BIPOC-only rock climbing club. But because white people love invading every fucking space, you can't even have a safe space. You can't even have a fucking safe space for people to have their own fucking club. It's like literally, there's an engineering club, okay? And a motherfucker who's like a liberal arts student is like, no, dog, I want to be in the engineering club. I'm not an engineer. Fuck you. This is discriminatory. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. He knows why people can still join the BIPOC club. They allow everyone to join all clubs. Yeah. It's so fucking annoying. Many, many, many instances of... Housing bans white people from common areas. Yeah, bullshit. Tufts University of NCU separates white faculty from BIPOC colleagues. Tired of white cis man? Come paint and write about it. University of Chicago Students Organization hosts BIPOC-only discussions about race on campus. Oh, my Lord. Liberal colleges doing the utmost to exclude and ostracize white students. BIPOC only events equal no whites, but they don't have the guts to say that, even though that is what that is. That's what makes us different than the murk grumblings of the common villager. The villagers have surrounded the palace demanding Mary Antoinette's head. The power dynamics have shifted. That is a fact. Progressive media outlets do not cover these stories. Some people out there have no idea. Wait, is he trying to say that like, wait, hold up, wait, wait. Are you saying that white people are Mary Antoinette and that like Mary Antoinette should be saved in this story? Did you just Motherfucker said 
This motherfucker said, I- I'm, I'm old school monarchist. You know what I mean? I, I think like, that's a cool take. That's okay. That's a what? Like he thought he was spitting there. I, I, that's an interesting thing. In the same way that social justice warriorism is just people trying to smuggle socialism through a capitalist framework, this is just squeezing white grievance through liberal capitalism with the same SJW optics. Like for real, what is this kind of zest? The Asian man trying to try so hard to advocate for the status quo, more white privilege. Yes. Well, what he's advocating for is like, please, white people, come watch my videos. I made a bunch of them that you will like. Uh, you know, if you're conservative, especially, you will love that. And this is a demonstrably successful entryway because there are a lot of people who uh, have a fuckload of white fragility who are like, oh my God, I really want a, a person of color to fucking say that like, uh, you know, it's it's really mean. And like, uh, and, and you know, black women being mean to me on TikTok is uh, the worst thing that could ever happen. Like probably worse than the top of the hour ad break, which comes at the top of the hour. And, uh, you know, if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for five dollars or for free with the Twitch Prime. Idea that this is going on, but worse, some others out there know but agree with what's going on, and for those people to convince yeah, themselves, racists, <laughs> that's who. <laughs> that this is not racial discrimination. They play mind tricks and word games. Like you half the people that are like, "Yeah, brother, he's one of the good ones," is like literally like, "Aren't you Chinese? Get the fuck out of my country." Take your balloon with you. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, dude, what what kind of what kind of allegiance did you create with the with the white people that like love this kind of grievance metric, this grievance politics, white identitarian politics, as Richard Spencer, who is a Nazi, by the way, calls it. Um, you know, you think those guys want you in the country? I don't think so. You know, because when 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 those people talk about white replacement and white genocide, like, motherfucker, you ain't white. You can you can literally tap dance all day every day okay you are doing white replacement <laughs> like your existence in this country for the people who are saying white replacement is real white genocide is real your existence in this country is literally white replacement you fucking idiot this dude retweeted bernie and ilhan in 2021 and retweeted elon and barry weiss in 2022 yeah something happened to him where his brain broke these phrases and talking points like punching up you can't be racist to white people you can't oppress the oppressor meaning i'm acting wait first of all those are literally like the, that's true though like why is he throwing the fucking air quotes like that that it, i mean that's true can you oppress the oppressor oppressively but i've designated you as the oppressor so everything goes or Abramex candy's infamous words the only way to remedy past discrimination is current discrimination or when people say things like Yes, that's literally, but that's true. You're bastardizing the quote, but that is still true, okay? That's literally true. You can't, here, I use that. I don't use those terms because I don't think that that's the best way to go about it because a lot of people are very fucking fragile, but that literally means you cannot heal wounds that were opened on racial grounds with a non-racial attitude. It just doesn't work that way. That's why I gave you the playground uh, bully argument. You can't, you can't fix inequality that was caused specifically on racial grounds by being like, okay, we're going to give everybody some money now, okay? So everyone will shut the fuck up. Like, that's not how this works. What we're doing to white people is not racism because racism is prejudice plus power and we don't have the power. Okay, now he's just doing funny faces and voices in an effort to, like, undermine the argument, but, like, that is true. They use all this mind- Oh, he did, the, he did a fart noise. Okay, I love that. MLK said the same. Come on, man. Come on. I can't even fucking get to an MLK quote without- Huh. He said, a society that has done something special against the Negro for hundreds of years must now do something special for the Negro. Okay, that's, that's, that's it. That's the, of course, you'll never hear that MLK quote because, you know, obviously that doesn't fit the fucking narrative that people love to whitewash. Uh, you know, just remember that. A section of the white population perceiving 
Negro pressure for change misconstrues it as a demand for privileges rather than as a desperate quest for existence. The ensuing white backlash intimidates government officials who are already too timorous. Despite new laws, little has changed in the ghettos. The Negro is still the poorest American, walled in by color and poverty. The law pronounces him equal abstractly, but his conditions of life are still far from equal to those of other Americans. Hmm. That's interesting. That's that's weird that like that never gets play. It's always I had a dream that, you know, white children will never be called cracker. That's because that's the real racism. That's what I thought that was the MLK quote. That guy seems based. I wonder what he believed. Yeah. I wonder what his opinions were about uh, Ho Chi Minh, specifically during the Vietnam War. I would love to find out. <laughs> oh, well. Malcolm X had a great quote as well. Yes, one that I uh, use regularly about how you can't heal a wound from a knife that's still there by pulling it a little bit out of the way, especially when most people won't even acknowledge the knife is there to begin with. Okay? You haven't pulled out the knife. Healing begins when you pull out the knife and you mend the wound. Not when you pull it out a little bit. You don't stick a knife in a man's back nine inches and pull it out six inches and say you're making progress. No matter how much respect, no matter how much recognition, whites show towards me as far as I'm concerned. As long as it is not shown to every one of our people in this country, it doesn't exist for me. Okay. Apparatus to delude themselves into believing. Yeah, that was Malcolm X who said that, not MLK. And what they're doing faces no moral quandary, but in the back of their minds, perhaps in their subconscious minds, is racial revenge. We experience racial this. revenge. You well, for the record, racial revenge is, I, I will admit, there is an element of that for sure. Okay? There is an element of that. Except because there is no fucking power there, it doesn't mean anything. It is ultimately meaningless. Okay? Some people do have that. Some people, understandably, being born into a white supremacist country that refuses to recognize the racial wrongs that have been committed towards them, will often feel anger, okay? Resentment. It's understandable. I'll even say justifiable, okay? It's understandable and justifiable, except it's also meaningless. It just ends up in, I guess, unproductive conversations, but albeit... They're not trying to be productive in that moment. They're just angry. Okay, finally admits it. Bitch, shut the fuck up. I've been called a white supremacist racist by the same fucking cringe TikTok Zoomers that this dude is making compilations of more time than you can imagine, okay? That doesn't change my attitude, and it doesn't make me uh, a racist person. It's just they're cringe. What are you going to do? The reason why I don't even cover it anymore is because the moment that I fucking say, you're ridiculous for saying this. They turn around and say, why are you bullying me? Because their goal is not actually like any sort of fucking real emancipa emancipation. Their goal is to just improve their fucking social standing, to get a little bit of clout. That's it. They're just cringe. You don't cut policy off of cringe-ass Zoomers, especially not ones that are TikTok clout uh, obsessed. Shut the fuck up. But what you fail to recognize as someone who has been a champion of progressive causes, okay, for a very long fucking time and very publicly so, someone who's been, uh, who's been the, the recipient of hundreds of thousands of death threats over the past decade, someone who's been doxxed many times, someone whose fucking family has been pursued, someone who's, uh, who has experienced every single thing that these fucking right-wing dickheads claim is happening to them on a daily fucking basis, okay, I also get yelled at a lot by the the groups of marginalized groups of communities on the internet all the fucking time when they see something out of context okay it happens who cares ultimately it's just chirping okay it's just powerless people that have nothing they have nothing so they're just yelling they're yelling into the fucking void to to get a sense of solidarity from that kind of thing experience it too. See how you like it. That people of color are using our newfound power to act this way and then pretend like none of this is going on leads me to believe that we would have done the same thing that white people did were we to be in their historical position. Because such acts have its roots in human nature, not white people nature. And one can only imagine what might happen in the coming decades 
when the demographics of the U.S. will have shifted such that white people will no longer constitute the majority. When yeah, the exactly. I love that he at least honestly and earnestly ties it to the, the white people are no longer the majority. Bro, what's it to you, dog? You participated in it. You literally are participating in it. Your existence is white genocide, you fucking idiot. The fuck are you talking about? The people that say white genocide think that you being in this country is white genocide. How are you going to be a fucking Nazi as an Asian dude, bro? You're not part of the fucking team, dog. Okay? This isn't World War II. You're not in Japan. What the fuck are you doing? You're literally at Los Angeles, California. Motherfucker's a UCLA uh, graduate talking about fucking white genocide happening. You know what I mean? the fuck do you think then okay if you want to do your part do your part if you want if you want to stop white genocide do your part leave leave the country i guess help help the racist white people like what the fuck kind of take is this that's an insane concept that's an insane thing to advocate for because even most white people when you explain the concept of white genocide to them understand that it's like nazi shit My main gripe is always the we with this video, but the examples are always anti-black. He says POC to shield himself from criticism from the people he's actually demonizing. Yeah, that, that too. But I'm sure he probably, uh, some people were saying he made another video about like how black people are anti-Asian. I'm sure there he just singles out the black community pretty aggressively. The younger generation you've just seen have graduated from elite schools and hold positions of power in our institutions, our government, corporations, entertainment, news media, and so forth how they might, in wielding the levers of society, be able to rationalize using their adult brain. The I can't wait for this dude to be like, yo, H Hassan Piker made a racist ass video about me telling me to go back to my country, by the way, which is going to be all a, it's going to be another funny fucking take. That'll get a, brother, that, that'll probably get you another 500k views. Don't worry, okay? Oh, I can't, I can't wait for that shit. Because you know, you know these clout driven ass donkeys fucking love doing that shit where they go, oh my God. I was attacked. I was a victim of a vicious hate crime. I'm not saying, for the record, just in the interest of clarity, I want to make sure everybody understands. Obviously, I'm not an advocate for fucking white genocide happening, okay? Because I'm not a fucking Nazi, okay? But the people that he's defending are. And white genocide, when you talk about white genocide or white replacement, as an Asian person, you are literally, personally doing white replacement. That's what they're talking about. That's what Nazis talk about when they say white genocide. In Great Replacement, they're talking about consensual adults having sex with one another outside of their own fucking races, okay? They're talking about white people fucking non-white people. Miscegenation. So unless you have it in your heart to say with your entire fucking chest that miscegenation should no longer be allowed, shut the fuck up about white replacement and Great Replacement bullshit. Because that's the truth. That is what it is. Hatred that was embedded in their minds during their adolescence. What we're seeing is just the beginning. To the white people who are watching, I just want to say, you are not an oppressor for refusing to accept an ideology that teaches people to hate you, that teaches you that you are inherently bad, that your children are inherently bad, that you are inherently racist no matter what you do or how you think, that you need to repent by taking affirmative steps in your life to redress harms that your ancestors may have done, or the racist action Bro, this is so fucking stupid. Oh, my God. I hate this. I hate this so much. Dude, look, I despise this kind of rhetoric, and I also despise the overperformative, selfish, liberal white people who are like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry for, for the racism, okay? My point is, team normal, okay? Be fucking normal. And this is my message to the white people as well. Be fucking normal. It's the classic Michael Che bit. It's like, you don't have to always, like the moment that you see a black person for the first time, you, you don't have to be like, I'm so sorry about police brutality. Okay, because that's not normal. You're still otherizing black people in that regard. It's so stupid. If you think that you as a white person need to like constantly apologize for racism in slavery, you're fucking ridiculous. Okay, just be normal. Don't be racist. Be anti-racist and move on. Okay, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Okay, let's get back to this story. Let's finish this up. It's almost done. Actions of other white people. In fact, 
You are not an oppressor, period. You did not choose to be born white. Just like any of us did not choose to be born any other. Bro, 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 bro. This like white people are the oppressor nonstop. This argument is so fucking stupid. Okay? It's dumb. It's like I hope people aren't fucking living their everyday existence by being like every white person is an oppressor. They're oppressing me currently by being in my space. Maybe some people are, but those people are fucking silly, okay? They're silly. They're silly billies. Jesus fucking Christ. You're just you're just straight up. You literally are just straight up fucking creating a universe that uh, by by looking at too many fucking psychos on TikTok and assuming that that is the norm, okay? Jesus fuck. Our race. And to ask of you, at the individual level, for example, to give your life in service of people of color, to be used as physical barriers at protests, to give away your house to black people instead of your children, all actual things that have been what? publicly demanded of white people, what? to ask this of you is morally reprehensible collective punishment. You're Bro, that's so funny. Yeah, dude, people are always going up. Normal, normal fucking people are always going up. No, man. This guy's taking it all a bit too bit far. You think so? Source, trust me, bro. I wonder why he didn't put the... See, he already put a bunch of fake articles that he, like, absolutely robbed of the context in here. Why isn't he putting fake articles on this shit? The housing is so stupid. What the fuck does that even mean? What is this? People in the comments literally say this made them cry tears of relief and happiness. Not under any obligation. Yeah, I hate it when people tell me to give my house to black people. Yeah, dude. Wait, maybe he's talking about me. Yo! Is he talking about me? Is he defending me? I take it back. You know, I, I bought a house and people tell me to give it away all the time. Not specifically to black people, but I'm sure uh, there was one unhinged comment like that. You know what I mean? Oh, actually... I'm willing. Where's nice bathroom? I'm sure he said that. He saw he came in the chat one time and nice bathroom was like, you need to give me your house right now. And he was like, wow, I can't believe the things black people are saying in this community. And because Hassan is so woke, he basically agreed with it. I feel bad for a nice bathroom catching strays. He's not even in here right now. To carry yourself in any sort of way that others demand of you just because of the color of your skin. This, you need to do this and you need to do that because you benefit from privilege thing is bogus. It is just a way for people harboring racial animus yeah, not even in here. to attack you. To say that the accomplishments you've achieved in your life isn't yours. And to silence you. It is not you. It is this ideology that is wrong and perverse. It is one cloaked in a shroud of pseudo-justice and self-righteousness, all the while excreting toxic fumes of racial hatred. It blames all white people for the actions of their ancestors, something you have no control over, while absolving black people of personal responsibility. Ooh, this is the best part. Ooh, he's saying we're absolving black people. Wait, what happened? I thought it was about POC. Why do you say black like that? Wait, hold up. I thought this was a story about POC being meanie bobinis, the white people. He just hit that black line so hard. He just, what? Huh. Why are we? Who's absolving black people of personal responsibility for their own individual actions? What kind of individual actions is he talking about? Toxic fumes of racial hatred. It blames all white people for the actions of their ancestors, something you have no control over. While absolving black people. This is, okay, here, I gotta say something here, okay? This kind of shit is so stupid because it's like, not, I've never seen this happen in the real world. Okay, I've been around for 31 years, about to be 32 this year, okay? I've never once in my life ever met the people that behave like this on TikTok and on Twitter in the real world where they're just like, go up to a white person or you're like, you're the fucking oppressor. It's only on TikTok. It's only on TikTok, dude. It's only on TikTok and Twitter. We're just like, that is not a real thing. These are not real humans, okay? That do this thing. It's not, it's not a real shit that it's not real shit that happens in the real world, okay? Oh my God.
This guy literally talked about white genocide and he sucked more white dick than I've ever seen. Like, you literally are doing miscegenation with this video while simultaneously speaking out against miscegenation. It blows my fucking mind. I don't, I've never seen this. I've never seen something like this. It's crazy. It's madness. Okay. Homie said, we got to stop miscegenation except for me. I'm sucking all the white cocks. Okay. All of them. Please, white people. Please. I will ride the whitest, the most Nazi dicks on the planet uh, to oblivion. People have personal responsibility for their own individual actions by holding that black people commit acts of harm, for example, towards another community, that's the fault of white supremacy. White people are controlling them like puppets on a string. No. Um, okay, I've been white for 25 years, bro. He's doing all this just because the one white girl turned him down in undergrad? Yeah, he thinks maybe this is a good tactic? I don't know. First of all, no one has ever said that, okay? As far as, like, black people uh, robbing them of their own personal individual responsibilities is such a fucking silly notion, okay? Black existence in contemporary American society cannot be talked about without talking about the systemic consequences of both segregation and chattel slavery and ongoing discrimination, okay? Ongoing systemic forms of oppression that is inherently anti-black, okay? That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. It is so incredibly stupid. That does not mean that, like, uh, you know, we're not holding black people individually accountable. As a matter of fact, when you talk about the criminal justice system, a big part of the problem is that, like, the criminal justice system straight up occupies black neighborhoods and over-polices them, and the criminal justice system gives black people longer sentences for the same kinds of crimes that are committed at the same kinds of rates as white people. Okay? It's crazy. If you don't have any hate in your heart but want to fight it as a matter of principle, this does not make you racist or bigoted. If you refuse- Wait, you're just proving his point right now? No? Do you fund- Do you not understand what I'm saying here? Like, what, what point am I proving? If we're talking about, like, individual actions of black people or whatever, it just, you can't just drop it like that in a very vague fashion, okay? He didn't make a point. He said something vague that is actually done in a very deliberate manner so that people like you that already have the implicit bias baked into their fucking brains immediately think of the worst possible thing that a black person in your mind did and go, wow, Hassan just justified that by talking about systemic discrimination, you fucking idiot. Did he give an example? No. Why did you do that? Why'd you immediately, why'd you immediately rush to do that? He didn't give an example. So I tried to parse through the vague generalization that he dropped in there with the hopes that, you know, I probably didn't even feel the, the need to address that. Okay. Okay. The overwhelming majority of crimes, regardless of what your skin color is, is caused as a consequence of your material conditions, okay? That's why, you know, poor white people are more likely to do crimes than poor, uh, than rich white people, okay? Just like poor black people are more likely to do crimes than rich black people. That's how it works. It's the same for everybody. And this isn't like a new idea. Crime manifesting as a consequence of your socioeconomic conditions, of your material conditions, is such an old concept that this shit's been around since ancient Greece, okay? Motherfuckers were literally doing pedophilia and, and pondering, okay? And they still were thinking about this shit, okay? Even back then. You've preached this forever. Don't you get tired of saying the exact same take? I will forever say it. As an Asian living in the projects. Okay, I don't give a fuck what your background is, dummy. What do you mean? What? 
Why does that mean anything here? What? So? What the fuck are you talking about? Okay. As poor Asian people are more likely to do crimes than rich Asian people. Does that make sense? Do I have to go every fucking racial subgroup for you to understand that crime and the like, uh, the likelihood that someone is going to do a crime is directly related to their socioeconomic status, you know, opportunity, educational outcomes, you know, material conditions. What do you mean? What what does this mean? What 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 are you trying to say here? As an Asian living in the projects, you didn't even you didn't even give me any clarity to what you thought I was uh, saying. You used to accept their premise in your head, but are too afraid to voice your opinion. Don Jenny, you're thank you for the twenty gifted. By the way, neither a coward nor a bad person. If you're of a liberal bent. But there's a small corner in your brain telling you as you're watching this video that perhaps some of this is wrong. Listen to your intuition. Uh -huh. Maybe he's like, don't. He's like, he's like, listen. Listen. Don't look at any studies, okay? Listen to your heart. Don't look at any studies. Don't look at anything that says like systemic racism is real. Look to your heart. Maybe watch some television. Watch the same TikToks I just watched and make up your mind off of that. Vibes. You think, oh, I agree with most of what the progressive left teaches about racial justice, but just not with some of this disagreeable stuff, only at the extremes. I'm here to tell you that the rot starts at the core. What? This racial hatred of white people is a natural outgrowth, part and parcel of an ideology that attempts to indoctrinate us into believing that there is current systemic oppression going on, that all racial disparity. Ooh, bro, the actual like addressable points that he's making, he just like slammed to the fucking ass end of this argument. He just straight up said black people uh, are, are, are never held responsible for their individual actions. Okay. That was ridiculous. Then he fucking turned around and said, then he turned around and said that like, there is no, there's this indoctrination uh, that's happening. Uh, that's widespread in society. In the, that's trying to dupe us into believing that systemic racism and systemic discrimination exists, which ridiculous. That's why I'm still indoctrinating us. Into believing that there is current systemic oppression going on. That all is it current, like as in you know it happened in the past, but like definitely not right now. Got it. The racial disparities we see today is the sole result of oppression by white people. When there are other more plausible explanations to be had, that these same people are silencing as impermissible hate speech. They're telling you, shut. Wait, what are the other? Wait, I want to know. I want to know what he's talking about. What are the other fucking uh, actual? What are the what are the actual things? What's the real reasons? Aw. Shut up. You'll take it, and you'll like it. But contrary to what they're saying, you don't have to take that. Yeah, fight back. You can fight back, dude. Yeah, white power. <laughs> yeah, he's right. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, that's right, dude. Fight back. Fight back against what? Like fucking cringe zoomers on TikTok being like, uh, white people eat mayo like this. Like that's what you're fighting back against? Man, we're really, that's it. That's it, boys. We won. White people are back on top now. You know what I'm saying? That's right. <laughs> uh. You can believe that the things that have been done in the past were morally wrong, as well you should. All the while believing that what is currently going on is also wrong. I love the conflation of, again, like random compilation of TikTok Zoomers uh, making white people jokes is the same as systemic racism that's ongoing, which probably in his mind doesn't exist, but also on top of that, slavery, dog. He said two wrong things can exist at the same time, you know, like slavery and also hurting white people's feelings. This video has given me permanent brain damage. It's given me emotional damage. It's given me psychic damage. I will forever be a new man after watching this video. This is, there's a reason why I watched it for an hour. This got fucking 3.4 million views in one month. Do you understand? 3.4 million views, dude. That's how fucking insane this shit is. That we're going backwards. That this is history rhyming with itself. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Like the history of chattel slavery 
people never really talk about this part, but like it actually didn't start with the Maxim gun, okay? It didn't start by like eviscerating indigenous populations in Africa. It actually started when, uh, uh, you know, white people were saying, black people dress like this. And that's how the chattel slavery really started. So who's the real villain now? Actually, it ended there too. That was it. That was the worst part about uh, slavery. Yeah. Yeah, all the fucking colonial exploitation, you know? Just theft of natural resources, um, you know, debt trapping African nations and, and maintaining their currency still to this day. All of that that is still ongoing, that's actually just the same as making like a white people can't dance joke. That's how that works, man. Holy fuck, dude. That's crazy. That is crazy. White people made fun of black people so hard they had to do slavery. These are all the same. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what is what is the logical conclusion that he's trying to go to? Like, what, what is he trying to say? That, like, it starts, white people, it starts by black people saying things on TikTok, and then it ends with chattel slavery. They will enslave your seven generations. They will rob you. They will tell you that you can't name your children Kyle or Brian, okay? They're going to give your children African names. That's right. That's what's going to happen. You can't, nope, no more Kyle. Nope. None of that. You're fucked. No Tylers. They're going to eradicate Tylers from existence. Do you understand? Every white child is going to be sold into slavery and they're going to name all of them Obama. That's right. Hussein Obama. No more Skylers. No more Kayleys. No more Karens. Michelle Obama. I rest my case. Almost turning in an eye for an eye manner. As the great Mahatma Gandhi once said, an eye for an eye will leave the whole world blind. But those grim <laughs> behavior would sooner gouge everyone's eyes out than realize that true victory for people of color would have been having history record that when the power dynamics shifted, we treated white people with a kind of- Bro, this is so laughable. Like, it, it is just so devoid. It is so devoid of any sort of like materialistic analysis. It's so like laughably silly. Like this motherfucker literally is at the end of it all, unironically equating chattel slavery to like black people saying cracker. Like that's insane. Don't you say that too? Yes, I do say an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. The problem is these two eyes that he's presenting are not equal. Okay? That's wild. I mean, it's literally equating mass enslavement, genocide, rape, murder, theft of people, robbing them of their culture, of their natural resources is the same as people making jokes about white people, dog. That's like, that is such a false equivalency. I wanted to make an analogy to it, but there's nothing analogous because I can't like, like, I can't, I can't make another analogy because that is the most out-of-pocket shit you could say. And the worst part about it is that so many people kind of agree with it because they're they're conditioned into believing that this is what's happening. Yeah, they're, He's comparing plucking an eye out to making a joke about pumpkin lattes or avocado toast. But again, even that does not show the disparity between the two things that he considers equal. Minus that their forefathers may not have shown our forefathers. But now, it will say when we gained the power, we turned around and started doing some of the same stuff to white people. Oh my God, bro, 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 bro. Did you not get fucking educated? Did, did you like, this is, I can't believe this dude went to UCLA, dog. There's no fucking shot. There had to have been a course on anything. Also, our forefathers? Fuck you mean our forefathers, bro? You are not white, dog. What the fuck? What is he saying? What? Bro, how does this happen? I mean, god damn, dude. I mean, he is literally a walking, talking example of the, the thing that I say all the time. But the third generation, it's over. Cultural assimilation is complete. There are no differences between anyone. You're an American. By the third generation, no matter where you immigrate from, you are just an American. You're an American dumbass, okay? And there it is. 
hey, when we gained the power, we turned around and started doing some of the same stuff to white people. Segregation, social ostracization, <laughs> hatred. Segregation, social ostracization, hatred sanctioned by government and law. Yeah, that's, dude, I'm telling you, dude, dude, dude. The worst part about lynching, the worst part about the Tulsa massacre wasn't actually like that it was, I believe, the second time that, uh, you know, they used an aerial assault on an entire community in the country, bombing it to the fucking ground, a black community that was actually uh, doing fairly well economically. It was the it was the mean words that white people were saying. Yeah. The bombing of Black Wall Street was bad because mean words were said. Yeah. When they dropped C4 out of a helicopter on the Africa family in Philadelphia, state-sanctioned violence, and burned literal fucking children into the ground, an entire city block in the move bombing in 1985. The worst part about that was that they were also saying like really mean stuff about black people. That was the, that was the real issue there. Yeah. He want to be so bad. He want to be white so bad. He's doing white supremacy. Sanctioned by government yeah. and law. And we're doing all of this while pretending like we're doing something valiant. We've missed our bus. The Tuskegee experiments and TikTok are the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Remember when that happened? The Tuskegee syphilis experiments? That was actually the same as, you know, just doing TikToks. But that doesn't mean that there can't be a course correction. So, to some people of color watching who are engaging in this sort of hatred, whether or not you're acutely aware, the same people that act like white people as a collective are not people, but rather some pernicious alien force that has come to invade the earth. With this video, I implore you to ask yourself, what are we doing to white people? As some people love to say, do better. Happy New Year, everyone. I hope The fact that as a white person, I clicked on this video fully expecting it to be a joke it says a lot. Oh, it does say a lot. Yeah. As a biracial person, half black, half white, this video means so much to me as I've been passive aggressively been shamed for my Caucasian roots. Bro, logic stands need to stop. Okay. Somebody needs to, somebody needs to tell logic stands to stop saying this stuff. Okay. Thank you. I wish more. <laughs> Who can relate? Dude, stop. What was the line where he's like, I got the blood of the slave and the master. Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm gonna, I can't. Okay. Thank you. I wish more people would speak up about this. Hatred only causes division. I experienced racial hatred. Bro, it, dude, I'm sorry, but I can't. I can't. I can't let that go. You're biracial. Okay. You're half black, half white. And you, you're saying you're getting discriminated more because you're white. What the fuck? What is that, dude? That's it. Then you're then you're white then. Like there's no that's it. <sighs> Biracial half white half Italian. You know it's funny that you said that because like <laughs> that's another Peep the comments. E-Rob is in there. Wait, what? No, he's not. Thank you. My ancestors fought to end slavery and fought for religious freedom. More recently, my ancestors, all from Europe and Asia, immigrated to the U.S. and were met with oppression and racism. They suffered and struggled. She's Polish, 100%. She has to be, right? I, she got to be. She talking about that? I don't know. They suffered and struggled and did not have an ounce of privilege. Even my father fought through poverty and sacrificed his youth to raise his children higher and give us a better chance than he had. I will forever be grateful for the dedication and love my ancestors, and I will do my best to continue to lift my family up and do the same for my children. What? This is what civilization looks like. Only a non-white person can make a video like this and not be labeled white extremist. Yeah. I mean, he is, though. 
but you're an idiot for not recognizing that he is just the same as a white extremist as anyone else that was no he is he is doing that Erob is in there higher up no he's not oh my god Erob this is amazing white person here and I had a conversation with my family about this very issue I am gobsmacked at your vision and communicating the silent violence bro Yo, white people used to do shit, dude. They used to fight wars. They, like, liter literally fucking liberated people from concentration camps, and now they're in the fucking comments of a YouTube video going, this is silent violence. Yo, white people are so down, dude. Holy fuck. That is crazy, dog. That's crazy. White people used to build stuff sometimes. You know what I mean? Why don't you get back to that? What is this? What the fuck is this? White people be like, I'm gobsmacked. Guys, that's violence. Stop saying white people be like, I'm gobsmacked. That is literally violent behavior. Yeah, the, what this shows that white people are always looking for a place to be coddled, almost like this is a safe space. I mean, honestly, <laughs> even then it's like, it's like fine. The problem is that like when white people want a safe space, they tend to make every space a safe space for white people, which it currently is. And that safe space oftentimes when you control everything turns into uh, a non safe space for non-white people. So that's the problem. It's actually, that's actually a pretty funny angle. Conservatives love those memes showing men in the 20th century going to war and then men in the 21st century getting Starbucks or whatever the fuck you can make the same argument for conservative white tears. I mean, I do like phonics. I did. That's you just described the, the joke that I made. That's the joke. But thank you. Uh, it's I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking with you. I appreciate all you're doing here, but it's super frustrating that you need to go on a two hour long stun lock to argue that this is when all the other side argue like this or against this when all the other side has to say shit like reverse racism is bad. It just feels demoralizing and I doubt your arguments here change a lot of people's minds, sadly. Sometimes I'm sure that there are sometimes people in here that will I mean we'll make a We'll make a video out of this. We'll make a YouTube video out of this. Hopefully uh, that will, you know, reach a larger audience. We'll see what happens. Went back in the VOD and Hassan Abi unironically watched a 60 minute minute video for 124 minutes. Fuck anyone in their peanut brain for saying you don't react hard enough. Yeah, no, that narrative is pretty funny when people say like I don't react hard enough. Um, or I don't react, I just like let a clip ride and uh, you know, go fuck off. Because like every clip that I have is like 10x the fucking actual uh length of the video. When I got to 12.30, I paused the video and started to cry. I didn't realize how much I needed to hear that until you said it. Wait, what is it? You are not an oppressor for refusing to accept an ideology that teaches people to hate you. <laughs> My baby cousin is seven years old, and she's been taught to be ashamed of the color of her skin. Bro, she's seven. What the fuck are you talking about? She's the sweetest, kindest, most empathetic girl you will meet. She's seven. It breaks my heart to see her being taught to hate herself. No, that's not happening. That's not a thing that's happening. 